What's up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session with today's showcase looking at the Battle Harmony Exotic and Wrist Runner combo. I will show you something quite beautiful to lay your hands on that will really show off how great the build is as a whole for everyone and for anything. Now I know I've been late with doing a build around the Exotic in name and I do apologise for doing so, but from what I've seen from other players and creators alike, the Exotic has a lot of flexibility in terms of what you want to build into it and it's so easy to do so that its general benefits will always be active and can easily outweigh other exotics just for its simplicity. Solar, Void or Arc, all three of these classes can give you something worth investing in if you have the right weapon to pair it up with, and from there you can just add on whatever you like. So like all builds, I will show you an easy to create template that will improve the exotics benefits greatly and allow you to get your super within 30 seconds depending on enemy type and enemy numbers present. The build will involve the use of self-harming yourself to activate the risk from the buff and can, and most likely will, will get you very injured to the point of enemies easily killing you in the process. But don't worry, I have a plan in place to prevent this and you can easily take your time if no protection is available. This is a very risky build to play with but also a nice one to mess around with that can make playing Gambit even more of a doozy. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. The subclass I've chosen is the Attunement of Control, so we make full use of Ionic Trace and this quick to access super, Chaos Reach. The idea I had in mind for the build is to quickly build up our super so we can get the Battle Harmony Armor Perk, Absorb Some Shells, to activate and then gain a constant damage boost that will further aid in taking down much tougher enemies. For this, there were many ways we could have done this. We could have gone with Bottom Tree Void and use a Void Weapon with the Exotic and have a constant flow of energy going our way for all of our abilities at hand which would have been slightly better than like Sin build in general. Or I could have gone with the top tree arc and make full use of the arc chain effects to always receive grenade energy back and thus be able to repeat the process over and over again until I reach max super, which is another great alternative to what I chose. Overall, Attunement or Chaos is the best fit I found that will yield you the most and all this is simply down to Ionic Trace. You see, Ionic Trace will always proc every time you get a kill and doesn't require anything complicated from there. With the perks effects, we will gain roughly a quarter of energy back to us per amount of times it procs. When we add in Elemental Wild Monster to the mix as well, there you can see where the extra benefits will now come from into play. Elemental Ordnance and Armaments will be attached to the gear and will proc the moment I use my Elemental Weapons, which are the same as my subclass or my grenades. Once proc, we will not only gain about 20% energy back to our abilities, but also have a 30 second ability regen as well. This will constantly top up our abilities over time, and combining this with Ionic Trace will mean we won't need to worry about running out of abilities anytime soon. This now will cover the ability to constantly have our grenades available at all times so you can use them alongside the Risk Runner. This will now mean once you proc Risk Runner perk, you can quickly build up your super alongside your abilities but also place yourself in a very risky situation. To finally top this off, our super has the ability for us to conserve its usage once activated and thus help with us building up a super back up quickly and repeat the process as many times as we like. Very nifty for what we are going for. For weapons, your main weapon will be the Risk Runner for its arc chain effects and its ability to be able to be propped whenever you like. Alongside this, I found that a good primary with fresh can help with building our super up even faster and a heavy arc weapon of your choice will be suitable for the build in case your wrist runner out runs out of ammo. For weapons, your main weapon will be the wrist runner for its arc chain effects and its ability to be able to be procced whenever you like. Alongside this, I found that a good primary with fresh can help with building up super even more faster and a heavy arc weapon of your choice will be suitable for the build as well just in case your wrist runner runs out of ammo. This of course is subject to change for a lot of players. With my primary, the heritage shotgun with fresh and outlaw, I decided to go with something that can bring enough firepower to take down major enemies in a few hits, and also a weapon that can act as a backup in case all other options of building up my super fails in some way. To be quite honest, I initially thought that having a weapon with the fresh perk in the build would come in handy in case things don't work out with exotics and mods, etc. But from playing around with the build, I found that its effects isn't that wholly needed to be honest because of what we have going on is already pretty great. The foundation we have created allows us to easily gain super energy without the use of extra mods or perks in hand, so the following perk for the weapons can be easily swapped out for something more beneficial, 
such as another weapon with a ability based perk built into it, or a damaging based perk, or even a weapon that feels more suitable to your own personal usage. Now if you feel like it's worth keeping the weapon in your primary with fresh available as backup, then I highly recommend you keep it, as one common issue you will come across is how weak the base form of this runner is against tougher enemies, and how you can easily run out of ammo very easily if you get too carried away. For a secondary, I'm using the wrist runner submachine gun to act as a conduit with this subclass and with the setup laid out will allow me to always keep myself charged and proc the arc conductor perk constantly. With our grenades, we will be able to proc its perk for roughly 5 seconds to which in that time frame, our weapon will gain a damage increasement, give us reduced damage and can also extend its arc chain effects for longer after each kill is made. This alongside the Battle Harmony Exotic makes it a perfect fit for how wide the chain effecting is and how much energy you can get out of this in a small group of enemies. Each kill made will extend your duration and give you your super energy back per kill made, but you're also chaining this effect to others which will speed up the process even more faster and also provide you energy back as well while all of this is happening. Compared to what other weapons are available in the game, this is one of the most effective ways to build into the Exotic with little effort and also shows the pros heavily outweighs the risk. For heavy, I chose to use the 7th Seraph Saw machine gun for its arc eccentric that will pair nicely with builds and mods in general. I will use this to do damage against bosses and tough enemies, but will mainly switch to it when things get a bit too hectic and I need to clean up quickly. Alternatively, the Swarm with Firefly, if you have one, is a nice pair to mix with it, or the Sub-Zero Sour Rocket Launcher with Chain Reaction is a great match to mix with the build considering its Chain Reaction perk, once activated, can affect multiple enemies in one, and if you have the Elemental Armors mod active, pretty much allows you to activate it a lot more faster. For the stats, your highest focus is to build into your super so you can get the damage buff going and have a much faster way of building up your super compared to what you have seen before. For this, you will need to build into your grenades as well so you can easily activate this runner that will then feed back into your battle harmony and thus grant you energy. I have found that building your grenades up to 60 should be enough if you plan to use elemental war mods and grenade focus perks to aid in the build up. Now I know I cover elemental war mods a lot, but that's because of how simple and yet powerful they can become if you use a matching loadout. Although charged with light will yield you better results, these mods are designed around synergy of classes and weapons as a whole and this build is exactly what you'll be expecting. 60 is enough for grenades as there are mods such as Elemental Well and Distribution which will be actively working in the background to keep you afloat and moving. Alongside this, this will also have our subclass ability, Ionic Trace, that provide a moderate amount of energy to our grenades. At this point, with the three combined, we can invest points into our stats elsewhere for better survival and for more personal usage. For intellect, considering how our exotic chess piece will always be actively working once we activate this runner, we can aim for the 60 to 70 ranges considering how quickly we can build this up in a short amount of time. With this area, I've also added in the dynamo mod and from the wisdom mod which will also activate when abilities are being used and we also have the fresh perk on our primary as a backup. This should be enough from there in terms of receiving the most effectiveness of the stat since the exotic in action will be doing the rest of the work. Once intellect and discipline are both covered, you should now have at least enough space left over to build into the rest of the stats as you please. Now onto the mods and these are what I chose to aim for, for the best chances of making the build feel comfortable and usable to the users. For head we have resilience, dynamo and elemental charge mod. Arm we have recovery, momentum transfer, overload machine gun and elemental armaments mod. Chest we have Resilience, because of Dampner, times 2, an Elemental Ordnance mod. Leg we have Discipline, Insulation, Submachine Gun Scavenger, and Protective Light mod. Bond we have Discipline, Distribution, and Frontal Wisdom mod. I believe the closest build we have created for faster super regeneration for the ARC subclass has been either the Geomax with fresh and high intellect stat, or Crown of Tempest with Wrist Runner and heavily used in Top Tree ARC with Ashes to Assets perk. This version has basically the benefits of both of those builds in one and has proven to be very much superior compared to what we have done before. I believe although Crown of Tempers and Geomags are good in their added areas, Battle Harmony offers no restrictions to class setup and offer more to the table for reaching max super and rewarding you for doing so. Yes, Geomag allows you to use your super for longer and Crown with Top Tree allows you to do the same 
but Harmony allows you to do both of these by simply playing within the subclass parameters, and from there, you'll have a great time doing so. For example, the build focuses on risk slash rewards for large benefits, and the simplest way to do this is using Risk Runner to activate its perk and have it correspond with the Battle Harmony to quickly build up your super and then have a constant damage boost at your feet. The risk here is self-inflicting damage to yourself, which can pose the risk of enemies coming in and easily wiping you out within a few hits. But the reward from doing this is you're getting your super up in mere seconds, and also gains ability energy from your subclass, for your mods and pretty much everything around you. We are taking the effects of the crown and geomags and placing them into one to create an ultimate final form of what the build should truly be like for general content. You can pretty much feel the effects of the build while you're charged up and firing your near infinite weapon into a crowd of enemies for long periods, and you'll see the super bar go from 0 to 100 in a short amount of time. If this ain't what power fantasy that we have been screaming for, then I don't know what it is, as this can easily outdo any other art build for warlocks made available. Now there is two issues with the build that I have come across, and that is running out of special ammo very quickly, and not having extra protection. For ammo, once you get charged up, you can easily eat through your ammo in a matter of seconds, and if you don't pay attention to this, then you can easily end up with no ammo in the first half of your mission. To avoid this, put on some scavenger mods to help with keeping you stocked up. We then have the personal protection part, and this also links into using the Risk Runner. For us to fully use Risk Runner at max, we need to injure ourselves to activate it with our grenades. The problem with this though is that the amount of damage we take, which is pretty much critical health, the problem with this though is that the amount of damage we take, which is pretty much critical health it places us on, which is highly risky encounters with dozens of enemies staring at you. Now, if you have the protective light mod, then you should be fairly fine for a few seconds of its use. But if you don't, I would recommend you use your healing rift more often so you can quickly patch yourself up, or use the bulwark mod, which is on your void class armor, and activate that mod so you can get an overshield and make it. It won't be super strong, but it will provide you enough defense to survive a mortal blow. This build overall would definitely make you want to try the battle harmony out and see what else can make the build work in a similar manner. This is one of the many other builds that I plan to explore in the near future, but this one here is a great start for those that enjoy experimenting with synergized builds. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titan 2 lore content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.